Hi folks, Christy from Shark Pixel here. And in today's video, we are going to talk about some amazing, mind-blowing new releases that have just come out in the Lightroom ecosystem. So I'm talking Lightroom Classic, Lightroom on your desktop, and Lightroom Mobile. They are lens blur and point color. I can't wait to show you what these things can do. So let's jump right in and I will tell you all about them. The first thing that I want to show you is going to be down here in the bottom. It is an early access feature for Lightroom Classic, but it is also in Lightroom Desktop and Lightroom Mobile. And this is going to be the lens blur section. So if I go ahead and just double click this little check mark next to the word apply, it's going to analyze my image and it's going to bring up the blur of the background. Now we can see this immediately by just clicking on and off of the eye icon right here in my panel over here on the lens blur section. If I want to see more blur, I can just pull up the slider next to blur amount, but you can also change the type of bokeh that you have in the background of your image. So you have a couple different options there. Let's just keep it on the first default one. If you do have lights in the background of your image, sliding the boost slider to the right is going to be an easy way for you to make those lights have more of a bokeh effect on them. The next thing that I just wanna point out is focal range. You have a lot of functional options here for really fine tuning what the focal range is going to be on your image. You can either choose select subject or you can actually show Lightroom manually where you would like the focus to be. If I click on this little icon and then I click on the background, you can see how the lens blur effect is being applied to the foreground and not the background. And I just wanna point something out too. When I did that, it actually changed the area on this focus bar or this depth bar from the foreground to the background. So as I pull this bar to the left, look at what happens to the model. She becomes in focus. So what this is doing is it's plotting the depth area that Lightroom thinks is represented in your image onto a bar from foreground over here on the left, represented in yellow to background over here on the right, represented in purple. And so when you click on this visualize depth checkbox, you can see what Lightroom thinks is the foreground represented in yellow and what is the background represented in purple fading to dark, dark purple. So off the bat, it's done a really, really good job. Now, if you come in here and you open up this refine area, you're gonna see a couple different things here. You can manually adjust some of these things. So you can add using the brush tool to the focus area, or you can add to the blur area using these two options. So I'm gonna turn off visualize depth for a minute. Now I know of course my blur is way too high at the moment, but I'm just trying to show you guys this cool effect. I'll just bring it down just so that I don't get any nasty comments. <laughs> Um, I'm going to click on the focus option, and that's going to activate a lot of familiar sliders that we see whenever we use the brush tool. Now I will come in here and I'm going to bring down the flow just a little bit. And you can use auto mask if you want, but I'm not going to for this. So I've got my brush here. I'll make it smaller using the left bracket key on my keyboard. And I'm gonna come in. I know that this part of the reflection is in the foreground because it's the reflection of my model. So I'll go ahead and just make that area a little bit more sharp using the focus brush, right? So we're doing this manually. We're using that focus brush manually to bring back this top area. And now if I wanted to come down here to this foreground area where I think I would like it to be a little blurred as well, what I can do is activate the blur option here, I'll bring my flow back up to 100. I'm gonna make my brush a little bit bigger. And now I can just paint along the bottom of my image to really make that shallow depth of field look realistic. 
You also have the option to add additional point of either the blur or the focus, and you can do that at different varying blur amounts, okay? So you can just add that button. I'm not gonna go into that right now, but that is also an option for you. So you've got your blur amount, right? We'll bring this back down to a realistic look. And now if we turn on and off the eye icon, you can see what the lens blur feature has allowed us to do. So that's just a little preview of our new lens blur area within Lightroom Classic. Again, I just wanna mention it is in Lightroom Mobile and in Lightroom Desktop. Doesn't have all of the brush in uh, focus and blur areas within the mobile interface yet, but I'm sure it's coming. It's just a matter of time. I'm now gonna move on to our next tip. So I've got this image up in my develop module and most of us are very familiar with the color mixer. So we know that we have our mixer and we can make adjustments to global colors within these sliders, but we're not able to decide what color we want to make adjustments to. Lightroom is the one that decides what reds are, what oranges are, what yellows are, and so forth. Now, this is why whenever using this tool to adjust hue, saturation, and luminance of a color, I always tell people to use this tiny little icon right down here, which is going to allow you to modify any color that is within the point where you are clicking on your canvas. And sometimes you'll be surprised at what color slider actually moves over here with what color you are actually clicking on in your image. So I might think that this is blue, this area right here, but Lightroom may think that this is aqua. So that's what I mean by that. Now we have this new area over here within our color mixer section called point color. Now we've got a box here and then we've got a vertical line here and we've got a line down here. So what happens if I want to change the color of the red petals in this image? Well, I can go ahead and I can use my eyedropper and I'm going to come in and I'm going to sample on a color. And as I move this color around, if you keep your eye on the right side of the screen, you'll see that the little point is actually moving around to what color I'm hovering over. So now I'm gonna go ahead and just, I'm going to sample a red color from these flowers. Now, what we can do is we can actually come on over here and to click and drag and relocate this little swatch if we want to. And what that's doing is it's making adjustments and changes to the color that we sampled. Now we can change the hue and the saturation in this box here. We can change the luminance of the value in this box here. And this box is going to show us the original color and the new color. You also have the option to come in here and do this all slider based. So changing the hue, changing the saturation, and changing the luminance of that color. That's all options on sliders for us old school people. And then for us new school people, we can do the, um, the box, we can use the box. If you ever want to zero out or bring any of these values back to baseline, simply click, double click on those sliders and they're gonna bring you back. So let's say we wanted to take these, um, these flowers and we want to uh, make them more of a purple color. So I can click and drag and I'll bring this all the way over to a fuchsia color and then we'll add just a little bit of saturation to those flowers, just a touch. And then we can also change how bright or dark those flowers are. So I like a little bit of a darker flower. Now I'm immediately seeing something that I don't like. If we look up here, we do see that some of these adjustments are being applied to her skin tone, which is definitely something we do not want. So there's two different ways that we can play around with this. So right down here, we have a box. This represents the hue range of what we are dealing with and the color. So as I click and drag that hue range, you can see something happening in the big box above, and that's gonna be a change of the hue that we're working on, okay? So our original hue, we can change from 
a little bit more of a red or a little bit more of a yellowish tone, okay? So basically, what this is doing is it's going to show you your original color, and then it's going to show you how much of the pixels surrounding that original color are getting the change, and then where that change fall off is stopping completely. So if I click and drag, you can see we have a nice um, soft edged square up at the top. If we bring in these feather sliders along the side, you can see that all of a sudden that adjustment is not being applied to any of the, the warmer skin tones. And I can really work to get rid of that uh, hue shift and the change to magenta from her arm by just constricting these values in these sliders here. Now again, you've got your original color and then you have where that adjustment ends being fully visible and where that adjustment falls off. So if I bring this all the way in, you can see that we're starting to see some of the original red color come back in some of these flowers over here. Well, I don't want that to happen. So let's bring this back. Let's, let's widen the visibility of that saturation range. And remember, this is not changing the saturation intensity, right? The saturation, hue, and luminance intensities are going to be these three sliders. These are going to be the constriction ranges on what you want this, this change to be applied to and what you don't want it to be applied to. If for any reason you were having trouble seeing what the range is, if you click on the visualize range option down here, you're going to be able to see the range of the colors that you're working on. So you can really fine tune these by bringing up the luminance range and maybe adding some of that in all the while still keeping an eye on this skin tone and making sure that that skin tone stays in grayscale because otherwise we're going to end up with weirdly colored skin. So I'll turn off visualize range. And now we can see that we have wonderful fuchsia flowers where we used to have red ones, okay? So that's just a little bit about how we can change the colors of our image in one step. Now you can also do multiple swatches. You can add as many as eight swatches if you'd like. Um, and then if we look in here, you can see the original color that was sampled and the new color, which it is. So when I brought this hue range and I constricted it severely on this side, what ended up happening was I'm getting like some yellowish colors in the dress, which I'm not really, really thrilled about. So what I would do in this situation is I would use this in conjunction with a select subject mask because this point color does work with the select subject as well. So instead of that, I'm going to hold down option for Mac users and alt for PC users. And I'm going to choose reset point color. I'm gonna come into my masking panel I'm going to create a new mask. I'm gonna choose select subject. And now it didn't really give me the greatest job of the selection, which is okay, because I know that I'm dealing with an underwater image here. So we're going to add to this selection and we'll choose the linear gradient to add to this selection and we'll just click and drag up there so that we are sure that we are including all the reds. And let's go ahead and add a brush and let's make sure we have that red selected these reds up here selected in the reflection just to make sure we've got them all all right okay so that's a really really good uh selection for our subject not perfect but it'll do for government work as i say in dc okay now what i'm going to do is i'm going to turn off my show overlay for my masking and i'm going to come in and i'm going to activate my point color eyedropper just as we did before i'm going to click on that red again and I'm going to click and turn it purple, okay? So we're doing the same thing that we did before, just within the masking panel. So now we're gonna just change up the saturation. We'll bump up the saturation a little bit and make those hot pink flowers, and then darken the luminance, okay? But again, what are we seeing? We're seeing the little area right here on that skin that's being affected by those colors.
So what I'd like to do in this situation is I'm going to zoom in, but I do like the fact that the dress feels more cohesive. We, in our shadow areas before, when we constricted that hue globally for the entire image, we were getting uh, magenta and pink flowers, but the areas around it were still very, very warm and red. Okay, so we're gonna come in here. Now that we're doing this on masking, we can click on our mask. We're going to choose the subtract method from our mask. We'll click on that. We'll choose object. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to just I'll probably do this a couple of times, but I'm going to come around the flowers and I'm going to just paint out the skin that I do not want that purple hue adjustment to be applied to. I'm gonna do that one more time. Choose subtract and then choose object. And for object, I have the uh, brush freehand brush option selected. You can also use the rectangular marquee tool if you'd like. So I'm gonna come in here, I'll make my brush a little smaller and make sure that the magenta is off that arm as well. Oh, I got a little bit of that flower, but that's something that we could fix later. All right, and so if we pull out here, you'll see that we were able to use point color using the masking feature to make sure that I have a wider range of changing my hue down here but I have a constricted range and I'm masking it out of the person up here. So what we can do is we can come in to our masks, we can turn on and off the eye icon on our masks and we can see the adjustment that we made. And that is it for our second tip. All right, folks, so that is it. I hope you've enjoyed these quick tips all about these new features that you can find in your Lightroom, whether you're on Lightroom Mobile, Lightroom Desktop or Lightroom Classic. It has been rolled out in all of them and I cannot wait for you to play around with them and see all of the amazing features that you can do just with a slider, right? So I will see you on the next video.